I address you tonight, yes, for the last time as ambassador for women and girls, but my work as ambassador has dovetailed so nicely with the work of Burnett. We know that gender inequality around the world continues to have a negative impact on health outcomes. We know that health uh, programs that effectively address the gender inequalities actually lead to better development for all. You've heard about the unique position that the Burnett Institute holds in Australia, in fact probably in the world, the fact that it is a medical research and public health institute but at the same time a DFAT recognised NGO uh, that works in many resource poor communities in our region. So tonight, ladies and gentlemen, it's exciting to be talking about the elimination of diseases. With advances in drug therapies, diagnostics, improvements in prevention and care, we've seen the lives of many millions saved. But we still have a long way to go. Globally, we know these infectious diseases still account for around 4.5 million deaths. So despite the remarkable progress, we know also that women and children continue to bear the brunt of these diseases, as the minister has said, both ministers. The issues of inequality, discrimination and gender-based violence all drive these infections and increase significantly the risks for women and girls, and might I especially note in humanitarian and conflict settings, emergency settings. We know that AIDS has a disproportionate, devastating impact on women and girls. It's the leading cause of death among girls and uh, adolescent girls and women of reproductive age, and in particular, in sub-Saharan Africa. We know that women and adolescent girls are twice as likely to become HIV positive than boys of the same age. Worryingly, around 28% of those girls have no knowledge as to uh, how to deal with um, HIV. So education is also critical. We also know that women and girls bear a disproportionate share of the caregiving associated with the, uh, the epidemics. TB, among the top five causes of death for women aged 15 to 44 in low uh, to middle income countries around the world and a leading cause, leading cause of death among HIV positive people. So elimination, it's only because of the impact of medical research public health policy and practice, and because of the exceptional work undertaken by institutes such as Burnett. It's also thanks to the funding uh, that is provided through organisations like the Melinda and uh, Bill Gates, uh, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundations and the Global Fund, and I commend them for their efforts. So what do we need? A coordinated and collaborative strategy. So like the Minister, I congratulate Burnett not only on the 30th anniversary, but on its newly released elimination strategy. It will create a two-way pipeline where research discoveries are tested in the field and field programs inform research through long-standing connections with vulnerable target populations in Australia and across PNG and Myanmar. So ladies and gentlemen, for 30 years, the Burnett has demonstrated forward thinking, operating at the cutting edge of research and in the field among communities around the world who've been significantly impacted by these infectious diseases. It's continued to support people at risk, young people, women and children, and those living with or affected by TB, HIV, malaria and viral hepatitis. And I know that there are many more discoveries too at the molecular level, new vaccine candidates and of course new therapies. So Brendan, to you and your team, I congratulate you on your anniversary and of course the launch of the new elimination strategy. I think we all look forward to working together to achieve global elimination targets for HIV, malaria, TB and viral hepatitis and of course to achieving a healthy and more equitable world. That's what I'm hoping. Ladies and gentlemen, happy birthday Burnett and thank you for being here.